This is a kilt. This is a struggling man. But just how do you put all this gear on? There is quite a lot to unpack here. This could wind up being quite contentious. So if you think I'm doing this wrong, this is just the way I've been shown how to put on a kilt. <laughs> Don't come after me in the comments. I'm sure whichever way you've been shown works just as well. Also, for safety purposes, I am wearing stunt pants. I'm going to assume that you already know how to put on a shirt. First things first, kilt. This is my own kilt. It's about 15 years old. Meaning that I was about 15 years slimmer when I was measured for it. Pull this buckle through here first of all. Oh, as hard as you can. The passage of time is no excuse. Buckle that up there. And then same on the other side. Bit simple this. Pull it nice and tight. And you should have some very aesthetically pleasing muffin top. There's a trick to this bit. So you want the kilt to actually sit just beneath your rib cage, but you want to be showing enough knee. So the trick to that is to get on your knees. Your kilt should just be touching the floor. And that means it's not too high, doesn't look too much like a corset, and you're showing enough knee to keep the ladies happy. Or in that case, probably scared the horses. The next thing you want is your kilt pin. So the kilt pin just kind of holds everything in place, unless your kilt was measured 15 years ago and it doesn't quite line up. So this, the front bit's called the apron of the kilt. Um, and it should just kind of line up with the front of the pleats here. But, <laughs> in my case it doesn't, but we'll pin it anyway. So you're, you're just kind of pinning it through here. And just kind of slot it in, nice and easy. There you go, there's your kilt pin. As you can see, it really doesn't line up anymore, but it doesn't matter. Then you probably want your socks. These are socks, or kilt hose, I believe is the correct term, because they are almost like, um, you're going back to the days of tights, aren't you really? So you kind of want to fold these over, you might need to fold them over a couple of times. Um, if, you, if like me, you have little short stumpy calves. But what you want really is for this bone here at the side of your knee, for two fingers width between the top of your socks, and that bone there, then you kind of want to get a garter just to hold everything in place. Trust me, if you don't put this on, by the end of the night your socks can be way down here and then you've lost all your weaponry. You'll see what I mean about that in a minute. This is Ancient Hunting Nicholson. Other brands are available. Pop that in there. Really simple, this bit. Two fingers width, do the other one. Next thing you probably want is your shoes. This is kind of where people tend to come unstuck, but it's actually quite simple. You don't need to do them like some kind of Viking in a picture from the 19th century. You see a lot of people that do all this kind of thing and all the way up here and try and cut off their circulation and then wonder why they're a couple of toes down. But actually, you'll see the laces are slightly different lengths. So do a couple of twists here. You'll see the reason for that in a minute. Couple of twists around the back. However many it takes to line them up. And then at the side, you just lace them up in a normal bow. Simple. Twist, 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 twist. Ugh. Done. And from here on, it's quite easy, really. You want your spawn, mainly because you don't have pockets. And a handbag tends to look ungentlemanly, although there are exceptions. Nice and easy, you just buckle this. Some kilts come with actual kind of loops in the back of them for you to put your spawn through. 
We're going to loosen up so it's not cutting off your circulation or giving you an additional layer of muffin top, but tight enough that it's not swinging around too much. If you're dancing, traditionally what you do is chuck it to the side like that so it's not getting in between you and the lady you're dancing with, depending on what kind of dancing you're doing. Then, if you're keeping it casual, you want a belt. There's just a, a kind of a buckle adjustment on the back of it. Pull that through there, and then try and squeeze. But we're wearing a waistcoat, so that doesn't matter, luckily. In this case, we're quite formal, so we're going to wear a bow tie. So you want to take your bow tie with one side slightly longer than the other, and then do that and pick up one of these. The more traditional form of Highland dress bow tie, because let's face it, who has time for all that? Then you've got your five button waistcoat. This is kind of formal without being formal. This is what we call an argyle jacket and a five button waistcoat. You could go tweet, you could go Bonnie Prince Charlie for the full on kind of formal look with big long tails at the back. But this is quite good. Jacket. This is more kind of day wear, but if you're going to a wedding or something like that, it's quite good because it works for daytime. And if the groom turns up with the full on Bonnie Prince Charlie get up, you're not overdressed. And lastly, but not leastly, you need some weaponry. This is Ski and Do. A lot of them are plastic, but not this one. My uncle actually nearly got arrested in Copenhagen because he was carrying one of these in his sock. That is actually part of our national dress, but the police didn't know that. Keep your eye out for the next video and why we put ourselves through all that.